This is a stress strain curve for some type of metal. It's probably not steel, maybe it's something like brass. I don't know, the exact type is not important, but hopefully you recognize this as a metal. Based on the general properties of this curve, you have your strain on the x-axis, your engineering strain, your engineering stress on the y-axis. You have this region here, the linearly elastic region, where as you increase the load, the deformation is constant. It, it deforms at a constant rate. It is linearly deforming. Then you reach this area where it begins to yield and deform plastically up until the point where it reaches its UTS, its ultimate tensile strength, at which point deformation stops being uniform across the sample and it gets concentrated you know, at some point in the middle where there was a stress concentration. The tension begins to expand that at a disproportionate rate and it begins to neck around there until it fractures. Okay. Easy enough, that's what metals look like. Well, in the context of rock mechanics, it's kind of good to compare the behavior of rocks to a metal like this. You know, a lot of engineering materials are metals, so when you think about what you would be using rocks for, you know, for better or for worse, most of the time for worse, rocks are the engineering materials we're, we're forced to kind of work with when we look at things like underground excavations, right? So let's compare that to, say, a profile of a, of a rock. And I'll start by drawing it. And I will note here, uh, this, for the metal, positive stress was tension. For the rock, I'm going to say it's compression. So think of, for this curve, we said as stress is increasing, that's tension. For the rock, think of it as an increasing compressive load, just because that's more useful to compare because rocks behave quite poorly in, uh, in tension because they have cracks that can be expanded and cause them to fracture really early on. So we start here, you'll note, okay, this is the linearly elastic region, simple enough. We can do a quick comparison here. For most rocks compared to most metals that we would be using for actual applications, it's going to have a lower Young's modulus, right? You know that the slope of this line here, that's going to be given by E, the elastic modulus. So the slope here is the same. We'll call that E sub M for the metal. We'll call this E sub R for the rock. So you'd say, okay, the elastic modulus of the metal is higher. And that is true in most cases. Now, a distinction to note here is that for most you know, rocks behave most similarly to ceramics as materials because they're composed of minerals, which have a lot of covalent and lattice, and lattice, excuse me, ionic bonds within them as compared to metals, which have metallic ones. But rocks are a very specific kind of ceramic, <laughs> as in they're naturally forming. So a lot of the ones that have taken material science courses, you may have seen a typical ceramic, you know, they say it's got a higher slope, you know, a higher modulus of elasticity and a higher uh, yield stress, which for ceramics is usually the ultimate stress than metals. But for rocks, that's not really true because, well, they're naturally occurring and we haven't engineered them to have these specific desirable properties such as strength. So at this point, you know, it's, it's, it's got a lower modulus of elasticity and its strength here We'll, we'll say the yield strength for now, but I'll explain why it's kind of moot to describe it in that way. Right here is, is still lower than it, what it is for the metal. And it begins to yield, let's say, and then bam, that region's going to be tiny. For all practical purposes, the yield stress of a rock or the yield strength is the ultimate stress or the uniaxial compressive stress. So let's start analyzing this a little bit, right? You would look at something like, okay, well, oh, geez, pretty different curves, huh? For something like steel, where the modulus of elasticity is probably even higher, you would expect a, a more significant difference in these slopes. It also takes longer for steel to yield. Steel is a very ideal engineering material, so it would be, it would, its curve would probably look a lot nicer than this rock. But let's start with the easiest comparison here, right? We've got this region where it's behaving plastically that's showing ductility. So the metal has ductility, the rock does not. 
hits that, bam. Which means the failures here are going to be catastrophic. You know, it's going to happen all of a sudden. It's going to be brittle. You're not going to have the necking and then eventual rupture. It's just going to happen like that. Boom. You know, the classic. If you've got something brittle in tension, then it just kind of splits as compared to something more ductile. It's kind of going to do something a little bit more like that before it finally splits in the middle, right? Now, in compression, rocks behave differently, and they usually won't just split like that. You'll usually have this sort of cone shape where you've got, you know, if, if you start with a cylinder, you'll kind of have this break in the cone where you have two sort of distinct planes cutting through here and here, going into and out of the page. So that's the first note. Catastrophic failure versus gradual you know, of course, and with metals, you're generally going to want to avoid yielding also. But where the failure actually occurs, the fracture, you have to go through this entire region. And then the other consideration here is energy, right? In rock mechanics, we call the area under this curve the strain energy density. And, I mean, at least for the rock here, we can pretty effectively use the approximation, you know, we're getting the area under this curve. So, you know... If we had a function, we would take an integral, but we'd say, well, why would we even do that? It's pretty much just a triangle. So the strain energy density of that rock is going to be just one half the base of the triangle. If we draw this as a little triangle, right? That's going to be the strain times the stress at the failure. And that seems a little weird, like stress times strain gives you strain energy density. Well, think of it this way, right? You have one half, that's just a number, we don't need to think about that. And then the units of the strain, that's going to be an inch per inch. And then the units of the stress, that's going to be, let's say, a kip per square inch. Kip per inches squared, that's going to lead to kip inches per inches cubed, right? Because a lot of people say, well, strain is unitless, so the units are still kips per square inch. But no, no, no. Think of it this way, and all of a sudden you say... Okay, that's a unit of energy, and on the bottom, of course, some length cubed, that's a unit of volume. Oh, going off the page here. That's a unit of volume. So it is indeed an energy density. And then, of course, yeah, that, this area under the curve here, way smaller than this one. So that rock's going to absorb much less energy before it breaks. It's got a much lower toughness than the metal. Which, once again, that goes back to it being not an ideal engineering material, but it's what you have to work with. So that's mostly all I wanted to cover here. Of course, if this were intention, like I said, think of the metal as intention, the rock is in compression. If the rock was intention, the Young's modulus would still be the same. But because with rocks, when you have, say, some cylinder here, and you've got cracks in it, right, all materials have little cracks at the microscopic scale or macroscopic scale you put that in tension in compression you were pushing those cracks together so you kind of nullified the the effects they might have on the on the strength of it in tension you're expanding them so the moment one of those cracks is able to propagate the entire specimen is going to fracture compared to in a metal where they're they deform more ductily more plastically it's able to blunt the tips of those cracks so they metals behave much better in tension, but the tensile strength might be, oh shoot, it's usually on the order of a fourth to an eighth of the compressive strength. So maybe something right like down there if it was in tension. But I think that'll do it for this video. Hopefully it was informative, otherwise good review, and keep rocking out.